2014 Major League Lacrosse Collegiate Draft will take place January 10th in Philadelphia at the site of the U.S. Lacrosse Convention. You can see that draft live right here on the MLL YouTube channel. Evan Washburn, CBS Sports MLL analyst, will serve as the host along with Quint Kesnick as they did last year. And we're breaking down the needs of the MLL teams as we head into that draft. And Evan, we're going to pick up where we left off with the Chesapeake Bayhawks, the defending MLL champions. They've won three of the last four. Uh, they've been the busiest team so far in the offseason. It's so hard to predict what's going to happen maybe with Dave Cottle, uh, but he's put together a great roster uh, there in his time there. What are your thoughts on what Chesapeake might do or what they should do, in your opinion, in Philadelphia? Well, what they do in Philadelphia, in my opinion, will really have no real sort of uh, imprint on what the, the results are of this summer, uh, 2014 Major League Lacrosse, because I think at the moment, this is the most talented roster I've seen in four years of covering this league. Now, we've seen in the past big-time rosters not pan out. New York is a great example last summer. But the way that Dave Cotto seems to bring together a bunch of stars, which he's done since he's taken over as head coach, and have them sort of play with one goal in mind, um, I, I don't really look to doubt what they can do. Obviously, the big, the big sort of linchpin to all this is Brendan Mundorf coming in and now being the quarterback of that offense from the attack. My questions in terms of uh, where they go, and, and excuse me for sort of taking Chesapeake in a direction away from the draft, because, again, I really don't think that this draft is going to be a big um, one for the Chesapeake Bayhawks, but what they do with the draft and what they've done is what other teams should do, and we talked about Boston a bit earlier, is, is they build for the future. They, they get guys in the draft that they'll sort of develop over the next two uh, one to two years, and then either sort of bring them in, uh, Matt McCready's is an example of that, into what they're doing, or use them as high-end trade uh, material uh, and sort of other teams sort of go off of what Chesapeake does in the draft. So what I see them doing in the draft is, is picking up maybe some speed at defense. Uh, Nicky Polanco, Brian Spleen, I'm not sure what the plan is with them. It doesn't look like they're going to retire but the legs got a bit heavy last year. I actually thought Brian Splaina played well on championship weekend. But they need some speed to go along with Michael Evans, who's your cover guy. You got Bernhardt down there now playing close. And you bring in McGill, which I think is a great trade. Uh, but you lose Michael Simon. He was a difference maker in between uh, the arcs. And you still have Barney Ehrman. So get some young defensemen, some fast guys that can cover, I think, they might not necessarily play every week, but I think they're, they're good to have in terms of depth with injuries if Nikki and Spillina are still going to be around because they'll need some weeks off or they may have injuries. So that's what I really think of a, as a need. But, but again, to, to reiterate, I don't think they have any needs going into the draft. Their need is to find a way to get all these stars to play together. Uh, just counting it up, I mean, the amount of offensive midfielders they have, there's going to there's gonna be some moves made, in my opinion, before week one of the season because – He's just got, he's got too many big guns that I don't think are going to want to sit out weeks because he doesn't have enough uh, active jerseys to go around for all the players he has. Well, Chesapeake every year seems to be the story of the postseason. The story of the 2013 regular season was the Denver Outlaws. Uh, they went undefeated 14-0, only to stumble uh, in the semifinals and lose to Charlotte. Uh, Jim Stagnita has moved on, replaced by B.J. O'Hara as the head coach. B.J.'s won an MLL championship in 2008 with the Rochester Rattlers, was on the Denver staff with Jim Stagnito, so maybe not a huge change there. What do you see Denver doing uh, now that BJ's in charge? And, you know, their goal is the same every year. They've got to get better to get over that hump and knock the door down and finally win an MLL championship. What do they need to do with the draft, in your opinion, to maybe take that step? Well, Chris, they've hit the reset button. That's clear. They've traded away Brendan Mundorf. Uh, Jim Stagnita steps down. So now it's about building a new identity for this team because that was Brendan Mundorf. I mean, they had a lot of stars around him, but he was the face of this team and this franchise. So through the draft, I think they're just going to continue to draft talented players to hopefully build a new identity and a, a new sort of narrative for this team. And is that Jeremy Sieverts? Is it Jesse Schwartzman? Is it Lee Zink uh, that sort of takes control of this group as the vet as they continue to be, build youth? I think the need going into the draft is clearly at that attack position. They pick up Matt Gibson via trade uh, before the supplemental draft. I think that was a great play. 
Um, he was a player we saw his rookie year win the Rookie of the Year award and show the ability to be a quarterback from behind the goal. Um, he's not Brendan Mundorf, so uh, if you're an Outlaw fan, don't think that you've really filled that void. But in terms of need, I think that, that the need, priority number one, needs to be find a difference maker at attack uh, to go along with Eric Law and Zach Greer, who I thought played really well together along with Mundorf last year. And then secondary, I, I, I think that the defense, uh, I love Lee Zink, but he's getting older, so why not get some younger guys in there to, uh, to continue to build depth? Okay, and the MLL draft once again January 10th from Philadelphia right here on the Major League Lacrosse YouTube channel. Evan Washburn will serve as host, so tune in then, and we'll continue our previews uh, with Florida and New York coming up next.